Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is part five of a five-part tutorial covering table saw safety, how to make effective rip cuts, how to make effective cross cuts, how to cut better miters and bevels, and finally, how to get the best cuts with plywood. If you're a veteran table saw user, you'll find some useful tips and maybe identify some areas where you can sort of fine tune your skills. And if you're a new woodworker, these videos will give you a big head start and will help you to keep your fingers on your hands where they belong. We've already made the first four videos and I've placed links to them in the notes below this video. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. I've also included a tutorial that we made about different types of plywood that you may find very useful. Today, we'll wrap up by discussing how to get better cuts in plywood and sheet goods. This is something a lot of folks struggle with because when project parts get bigger, there's more room for all sorts of error. As we did in our last four parts, let's begin with your saw blade. Most table saws come with one of these, a general purpose or a combination blade that has 40 or 50 teeth and is designed to cut both with the grain and across the grain. As long as it's kept clean and sharp and it's of good quality, it'll work perfectly fine for 90% of your cuts in solid wood, but not for plywood, at least not in the nice veneered plywood used in woodworking projects, especially not when cutting across the grain. Yes, plywood has grain direction. It's true that the grain inside the sheet crisscrosses because each layer lays in the opposite direction as the one below it. But the outer layers do have a distinct grain and those fibers will splinter and tear if you cut across them with a blade with a low tooth count. You may not care so much with utility grade plywood, but good plywood for cabinetry is best cut with an 80 tooth cross cut blade. Believe me, the quality of the cut is well worth the extra cost for a good quality blade like this. And it can be used for more than just plywood. It's my blade of choice for miters and other delicate cross cuts in solid wood as well. The biggest challenge when working with sheet goods is the size and weight. A full sheet of three quarter inch MDF weighs near a hundred pounds and the four foot width makes it awkward to carry too. You can easily injure yourself trying to maneuver a full sheet from your vehicle through your shop door and onto your table saw. So get some help if you can. Help doesn't always come in the form of another person though. Several companies make handles like this one to make lifting and carrying large panels a little bit easier. Better yet, there's wheeled panel carriers that can help you unload, carry the panel through even a narrow shop door, and feed it right onto your table saw. Another option is to break down the plywood before you bring it into your shop. Throw an old sheet of OSB on some sawhorses or even right on the ground and use an edge guide to reduce the full sheet into manageable pieces that can be further broken down on the table saw. If you don't have an edge guide, you can freehand cut with a circular saw, but don't count on that being your finished cut. In fact, leave yourself a little extra space, maybe a half of an inch, and leave yourself at least one factory edge on each piece. Take the pieces to your table saw and run the factory edge against the fence to straighten your circular saw cut. Then put your fresh edge against the fence and trim away the factory edge, bringing the part down to its final dimension. Rich Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none, both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra premium brands. Do yourself a favor, use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again. If you have to work with large panels at the table saw, you'll find that getting accurate cuts can be far more difficult than you may be used to with smaller work pieces. This panel isn't that large, but it's still a bit unwieldy. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna use it to show you how to handle a piece up to a full sheet. For one thing, if this was much bigger, I would want to use some roller stands or something to support the sheet and keep it level with the top of the saw as I feed it into the cut. And I'd want something on the other side of the saw to support it so it doesn't flip up off the blade at the end of the cut. If I was cross cutting a full sheet and a lot of it would be hanging off the side of the saw, I'd want something to support it there too. This may sound like a big hassle and you may want to just muscle it on your own to make one cut and to get it down to a smaller, more manageable size, but you'd be putting the safety of yourself and the quality of the cut at considerable risk. As I begin my cut, my primary concern is keeping the edge of the panel against the fence. With a large sheet, I may even have to stand on the side at first. This is vitally important. 
If that edge drifts away from the fence, even for a moment, the cut will be crooked. The bigger the panel is, the more difficult it will be to maintain contact with the fence because a sheet of plywood is like a giant lever. Even small movements can have big effects. So feed slowly, watching the fence, not the blade. Late in the cut, move to behind the saw and continue feeding the sheet while maintaining firm pressure against the fence. Finish by pushing the sheet all the way past the blade. Without outfeed support on that side, it would be impossible to do this without the whole thing tipping up on you. If you don't have stands or sawhorses available, you can enlist the help of a friend, but be sure he lets you guide the cut. His only job is to help support the weight. You can't have two people guiding the cut at once. It's almost certain to lead to problems. Unless you have a big shop with huge infeed and outfeed tables, you're unlikely to get perfectly straight and clean cuts with a full sheet of plywood all by yourself. You may as well just plan for it and leave yourself some extra room on the first cut. Then, once you're down to more manageable sizes, you can cut it to its final dimensions with more confidence. For some reason, working with plywood seems to make some folks forget certain cuts should be made with a rip fence and others with a miter gauge or sled. Maybe we just get caught up with all the cutting and rotating of project parts and it all just seems the same. But there comes a point where it's not safe to use a rip fence anymore. As a rule, if the length of the edge that's against the fence is shorter than the distance between the fence and the blade, you won't be able to keep that panel from twisting and potentially binding during the cut, maybe with dangerous results. So get out your miter gauge or your crosscut sled and make the cuts the safe way. Other than that, plywood is much like cutting solid wood with the same tear out and other issues that we covered in previous parts of this series. I've linked to all those videos in the notes below this one and I encourage you to watch them. I've also linked to a handy tutorial about plywood types and which are best for woodworking. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.